was suspended one game without pay after receiving his fourth flagrant foul of the postseason in game five against the Warriors. Warriors center uh, Andrew Bogut was asked about the physicality of the series against the Rockets. And this is what he had to say. There was some physicality there, like any playoff series, but the Memphis series was more physical. This was more about ducking and weaving and getting out of the way of aired fists and elbows. All right, Stephen A., what do you make of his comments? I think that's accurate. Um, you know, but everybody's taking it as a, as a shot at Dwight Howard or as disrespectful. Have y'all watched the Memphis Grizzlies? I mean, they have Mark Gasol, who's about seven feet tall, legit 280, you know, and we're talking about Zach Randolph. I mean, when you think about that commercial, where's the beef from years ago? <laughs> Look to Memphis, because that's exactly where it is. There's no shortage of beef in that front line, not with that Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph is a guy devoid of athleticism. He couldn't jump onto a curb, okay? He has no ups whatsoever, but that brother can play. And the primary reason he can play is because he loves to bang. That's what he does. That's who he is. There is no shortage of physicality when it comes to Zach Render. He's just leaning on you, just elbowing you, just j jumping into you. I mean, he's doing everything. And then after that, I mean, when you're going to the locker room, he might bump into you walking to the locker room. That's just who he is. Right. So when you go against guys like that, and then you're going up against Dwight Howard, who's big, who's muscular, but not so big compared to those guys because they're seven feet they're 6 11 they're 6 10 they're 260 270 you talking about a guy like Dwight Howard that's right around this size. I remember Dwight Howard without shoes is 6 9 Dwight Howard is not I mean he he's really a center in a power forwards body the reason why he's played the five throughout his career is because of his athleticism his ability to run up and down the floor and more importantly his ability to rebound and block shots so that's why you have him at that position because that's where his potential could be maximized but the white howard isn't really that big of a dude compared to the other guys and his game doesn't entail banging because of it and it's just that simple so I don't think that Andrew Bogut was wrong in what he was saying actually I thought that that that, that the Australian was quite accurate if I may mm. add the flip side <laughs> to your Australian yes, accent no it is not no it is not yes. but the, no, 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 I don't know what it was but, but, but you know I did have a great time in Sydney Australia oh. years ago it was a beautiful city but the point is is that this guy this guy was absolutely right but I don't think it should be interpreted as an insult against the White Howard, considering what you compared it to, which was Memphis, arguably the most physical team in the NBA. I don't know. Those last couple of lines from Bogut sounded like he Fist was calling elbows. Dwight a fake tough guy. That's oh. what it sounded like to me. Maybe I'm reading too much between the lines, but those other guys you talked about at Memphis, those are not fake tough guys. Those, those are flat out they're real, they're legit tough guys. Yeah. And you look at Dwight, and I get you with no shoes, he's 6'9, plays it six what you give him 11 in shoes maybe yes. those shoulders look like greek god shoulders yep. you know like it, it looks like he could do more damage with his body than he ultimately is able to do even though his, his numbers are, are always very good That's his fair. double double numbers are great but listen bogut still doesn't get enough credit he's the only guy they have that does the dirty work down low he is their one seven footer, although Fest is Ely, my guy from Vanderbilt. Zilly comes looks in good. He, he's, he's looking to good, Skip. He can be an X Factor. Yeah, I know, he can be an X Factor in these, in these finals. But when you look at the NBA's number one defense in efficiency this year, the Golden State Warriors, Bogut missed 15 games this year. Yep. When he was off the floor, they gave up 105.5 points a game. In the games he played, they gave up 98.6. Well, that's, that's a big swing right there. Six, and it's about rim protection because Draymond is listed at 6'7". I don't even know what, is he right in that ballpark? Mm -hmm. He's not a huge guy. And Spates hasn't been able to play. He's listed at 6'10". He might be able to play starting with game one. So maybe that'll be a big addition. Harrison Barnes is 6'8". David Lee hasn't played very much. Looks like he put on a couple pounds. Yeah. That's just me. David but, Lee? Yeah. That's what's sitting on the bench. I know he's been sitting. That's sitting on the bench. But, but he's listed at 6'9". My point is, this isn't a towering basketball team here, except for the Australian, who's a legit seven-footer, 
who can get a little nasty down low. Yes, he and, can. And they need that. Yes. And he well, will protect that rim. Well, he's listen, he's no scrub. Yeah. It's just that the best ability is availability. And obviously, in the last three years or so, it was questionable yep. about him, and I stand by what I said. So that's why that, you called him Bo Gus. That's right. Right? Not because he couldn't oh, play. Okay. It was because he wouldn't play. You understand? But or not couldn't play. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he says yeah. could it, but, you know, listen, hurt, injury, there are debates. Okay. Now, you can, you can sit there and, okay. and think it's the coach. I, you know, I know players, too, mm -hmm. and I know what players said, but they obviously have respect for his skill and his ability, mm -hmm. and the fact that he's doing a good job for them in these playoffs He's formidable, and he's a formidable presence. But let's get back to Dwight Howard for a second. To piggyback off your point, here's where Dwight Howard gets knocked, and it gives those statements by the Andrew Bogut's mm -hmm. and others of the world validity about him. You lose in game five of the Western Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. You've been in the league for 10 years. You've made one visit to a finals. You've never won a championship. And you look at people with the straightest, most serious face you can muster, and you say, I'm a winner. <laughs> what have you that won? That was after game five. That was yes, after game yes, five. Crazy. This is after he lost. Mm -hmm. See, when you do stuff like that, yep. that's when the Dwight Howard that I love and respect and, and, and think the world of, now all of a sudden the Kobe's of the world and others and Shaq getting on them in the past mm -hmm. and others looking at you, that's when the criticism gets elevated in terms of its validity. Because now you have the audacity, the unmitigated goal mm -hmm. to look at the American public, the basketball public, the world over. And then suddenly you're trying to redefine what a winner is. Because mm -hmm. that's not our definition. Now, now, no, nobody's calling you a loser. But... You, you can't say you're a winner when you don't have one single championship yeah. to show for it. You can't do that. And when you're $88 million mm -hmm. and you got a guy like James Harden, who was a number two candidate for league MVP honors, okay, yep. and you're going against Andrew Bogut. Mm -hmm. You're going against Andrew Bogut. 18.16 rebounds, four blocks. They're respectable, but you ain't paid $88 million to be respectable. Mm -mm. You're paid $88 million to be great. And you can't, you just can't look at the public and go, I'm a winner. Because now we're like this. You see, that's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. That's what they were talking about. Chance. Because how in God's name yeah. are you calling yourself a winner yep. and you going home? You literally in the arena watching the other teams celebrate because they going to the finals. And you say, I'm a winner. No, no, no. The dude's down the hallway with their press conferences yep. with the winners. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. Wouldn't you agree? Big picture on Dwight. <laughs> he has never been able to live up to the expectations inspired by his physique, his presence, what you, you see, you know what, what you, you... You know what? Yeah. I, used to, I used to try to fend that off yep. because of who you're going up against, what you, but I can't anymore. The fact of the matter is, is that Dwight, even with his quotes in the post season, you know, having fun, the affable atmosphere, the personality or whatever, whatever, at some point in time, bro, you got to look in the mirror and ask yourself, mm -hmm. how's that working for you? You know, you got, I mean, try getting big and nasty. Try being nasty. Try being, having an attitude. Try being unpleasant. Try yep. doing what you, because you need to, you, he's got to learn to truly, truly hate losing. Mm -hmm. and, and you got to, and no more importantly, you got to sit back and go like this. I'm a loser today. I don't like this feeling. Yeah. Because if you convince yourself that you're a winner when you were losing, where's the priority to win right. if you already think you're a winner? Right. We, and, we and, know you're not. And remember, winning yeah. isn't defined by getting cheap shot technical fouls. And he got, what, four Well, I mean, you down there banging yeah. and elbows. So I don't blame him as much as I blame the league for its soft tendencies Sometimes. these days, calling everything. But I will point the finger at him in terms of you don't get to tell us you're a winner when You've never won. I, I will bet you, you Steph, can't do that. If you gave Steph and Clay a choice, they would take Bogut over Dwight. You think so? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I believe that. Speaking of Bogut, he said last year he was trying to get the Warriors to sign fellow Aussie Matthew Adela Vadova, but there was mm -hmm. no time mm -hmm. and no space on said roster. That's just kinship and patriotism. That's all that's about. Mm -hmm. How you how you gonna sit there and tell the world you, you, you gotta sign this guy? I got <laughs> Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, but we've got to sign this guy. Really? Really? You think you're trying to tell me? I, listen, I like Matthew Delavadova. You trying to tell me you want him over Sean Livingston? Mm. 
Maybe over Barbosa? Well, maybe. No, no, yeah. b- b- maybe. Maybe. Mm. Maybe, but come on now. I mean, you, it's not like it's a priority to get another guard when not, you got Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. Not, let, not, let, not let's not stop after that. Golden State. Let, let's stop that. Uh, James Harden adds they need one more playmaker uh, on the Rockets if, in fact, they want to be winners. As He's right. Said He's right are. about that. Uh, coming up next, we're talking about Brandon Marshall. He gets a new contract. What does that mean for him and the Jets? That is the debate on the other side of the break. We'll be right back in just a few moments. We've got about how much time left before we get